Low stress diet. For thousands of years, horses have evolved in steppe regions, trusting in their ability to remain alert. Evolution has selected those individuals that have managed to avoid attacks from the predators attempting to take them by surprise. Horses have a radius of sight that is practically 360 degrees, and although they are able to make out fewer colors than we are, they have a much higher capacity for motion detection. Their auditory capacity is also much greater than ours. This acute sensorial capacity ensures that horses are able to flee quickly when danger approaches. But almost 50,000 years ago, one predator of horses began to establish a relationship with them that has continued to modern day and that has changed the history of both species. They are no longer the driving force behind the army or a main mode of transport, but they are the ideal companion for tourist outings the star of passion-filled sports events, and an excellent tool for the physical and emotional development of children. They even provide a means for treating illnesses and handicaps. The possibilities for equine therapy are growing more popular by the day, and the results can be spectacular. The animals used for this purpose must be particularly calm and trustworthy. Generally speaking, the demand for calm animals is growing. But on occasion, the defense mechanisms of each species can create dangerous situations for the people who handle them. A horse that starts violently is a risk in any situation, not only when riding, but when grooming, transporting, or shoeing. Stress is an adaptive mechanism that is an effective defense against predators in a natural setting. But for an animal in captivity, being under continual stress can result in physical or psychological damage. Up to now, the only way of avoiding these continually stressful situations was through training and breaking. Recently, however, it has been suggested that diet may also influence a horse's stress level. Dr. Alberto Redondo of the University of Córdoba studies the behavior of horses and its relationship to diet. He fed 50 horses a standard diet containing 3% fat. After two months, he put all of the horses through a series of tests to evaluate their stress level and their response to an unexpected scare. He measured their heart rate variability at night, as well as bloodstream levels of cortisol, a hormone that measures stress. Flight response was measured using a tiger head model that popped up unexpectedly. This experiment was also carried out at night in order to rule out the influence of the animal's daytime activities. Later, he divided the horses into two random groups. He continued to feed half of them with the same diet. The other half ate a diet with the same amount of calories, but with 10% of vegetable fat. After two months, he put the horses through the same tests and observed that those with a fattier diet were more relaxed at rest. They were also slower to react to the tiger head while the other group of horses continued to experience high levels of stress. In order to prove it was the fat that was responsible for the horse's lowered stress levels and reaction times, he swapped the diets being consumed by each group 
and then repeated the tests for a third time after two months. At this point, the results were conclusive. Those who cut back on the fat recovered their higher stress levels at rest and were quicker to react to the predator model, while those with the 10% fat diet were observed to be more relaxed than ever. By simply adjusting diet, we can reduce the risk of accidents in the presence of horses. And not only this, by reducing their stress levels, we are also improving their well-being and their quality of life. This faithful companion deserves a concerted effort and dedication on our part to try and understand their way of thinking a little better each day. In this way, we will be able to return to them a small part of what these noble beasts have given us.